Here we go, young people. Another little bonding lesson here. Today we're going to be talking more about ionic bondings and methods of finding formulas. So what you need to do here is you need to be looking at this video and choosing the method that best represents where your understanding is. Do not choose a method that you do not understand because if you choose a method that you do not understand, you're not going to get problems right all the time and that's the key. Eventually, if you're choosing a more visual method, you will eventually get to a method that is a little less visual. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So topics to understand, what methods could we use to find ionic formulas? Writing correct formulas for binary ionic bonds, and any ionic bond really, and correctly naming binary ionic bonds even with d-block metals. So we need to talk about the d-block metals a little bit. So dot structure method. So basically, this only works for S and P block elements, only the representative elements. If it's not a representative element, it does not work. So let's see if we can figure some stuff out here. So we have SR. SR has two valence electrons. I'm sorry, two valence electrons. I'm not drawing very well. Two valence electrons. And maybe we have, um, let's say, CL. CL has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. So what we see is we know that SR wants to lose these valence electrons. So that valence electron is going to go here to CL. And we have that valence electron from strontium right there for Cl. But notice strontium still needs to lose a valence electron. Cl is now happy. It's got a minus one charge. Everybody's octeted. Everybody's good. But Sr is not. So I need another Cl. So here I come with my other Cl. Cl has seven valence electrons. So this Sr loses this one to this Cl. And we get a Cl, another Cl that's happy. We have Sr that's now happy. And what we have is we now have an electrostatic attraction between the two plus and the minus charges. But notice it's a two plus and two one minus charges. So the overall compound has no charge. There is no charge there. It's always gone um, because the charge evens out because there's a two plus and a two minus. So we see that this is SrCl2, also known as strontium. chloride. Okay, strontium chloride. Okay, got that? Pretty simple. Okay, the next method is the visual plus and minus method. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, a method in which we do the kind of same thing with the dots, but this method works every single time for every combination, even the ones that are in the D block that change charge. And we've talked a little bit about those, but we want to kind of deal with those a little bit more. So let's choose one of those. Let's say we have Fe with a three plus charge. So I draw three pluses, okay? Not a big deal. And I have, let's say, uh, S with two minus charges. So what I know is for every electron lost, it has to be gained. For every electron lost, it has to be gained. I still need to lose electrons on the Fe, so I need more of my S. For every electron lost, it has to be gained. Well, now I have an extra electron that needs to be gained, so I need more losing electrons. So I have to have more Fe with a three plus charge. Every electron lost needs to be gained. Now I have more losing electrons, so I need more of the S to be able to gain those electrons. There we go, there we go. Eventually it will all even out. Don't panic. You might panic, but don't panic. So what do we see on the screen? We see Fe, two, we need to see two of them, and we see S3. Now, because the Fe had a three plus charge, and there are different forms of Fe, I have to name it as such. So I have to name this iron three sulfide, or I could also name it ferric, because that's on your sheet. Okay, oh, sorry, I don't know what just happened there, but so I could keep ferric. Ferric sulfide. Either one of those two names is absolutely correct, okay? So, 
that's the visual plus and minus method, and you can see it really works. It works for D blocks, it works for the representative elements, it works for everything, including polyatomic ions, which we haven't talked very much about yet. So, least common multiple method. Least common multiple method also works for every single combination because what you're doing is you're trying to find the least common multiple of, of things. So, let's talk about AL3 plus, and actually, let me, let me change that. I'm going to change it to something else here. Okay. So, let's talk about a PB4 plus and um, O2 minus. Okay. So, what we have to look at here is we have these two numbers that represent the number of electrons lost and gained. So we have four lost, we have four, two gained. So what is the number that both of those numbers, the four and the two, will go into evenly and not have any decimal? And the answer is the smallest number that that happens with is four. So that means I need four electrons lost, I need four electrons gained. What do I multiply a four by to get a four? That's a one. What do I multiply a two by to get a four? I have a two. So my formula is PB. O2, and because lead is one of those that changes charge, I have to tell you, so I'm going to call it lead 4 oxide. That's the name of it. I could also call it plumbic oxide. So either one of those will work. So you can see least common multiple method. All you have to know is how to find the least common multiple. This is a mathematical process. All right, next one and last one is the switcheroo method. In the switcheroo method, you have to be really careful because there are exceptions. And if you're not mathematically savvy enough to determine where the exceptions happen, you're gonna have a real problem. So if I look at aluminum, three plus, and let's say Cl1 minus. Okay, switcheroo says I'm going to take the 3 from the aluminum and make it the number of CLs. And I'm going to take the 1 from the CL and make it the number of aluminum. So I get a formula of Al1Cl3. And because aluminum keeps its name and it's not a D block metal, I'm going to call that aluminum. And then CL binary is going to be chloride. Aluminum chloride. Okay, so. If you don't understand where it falls apart, you probably shouldn't use this one. Um, if you understand it, go for it. It doesn't really matter. If you understand exceptions, you know when it falls apart, you know how to fix it. If you don't, don't use it. Use one of the other methods. All right, thank you.